Well, we like to talk about the bad, the good, and the beautiful in the yeah. economic world. Clint Eastwood had the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. We do the bad, yeah. the good, and the beautiful because we always like to take people to Jesus. We tell about the problem, and you just yeah. described the problem. It's cancel yeah. culture. It's, yeah. it's our exporting of, of really bad right. image of ourselves. What's the solution? What's the good? What can we do about that? We've got to get back to the simple word of God. It is the manufacturer's handbook. If my watch, which is a nice watch, gets out of whack, I like to send it back to the manufacturer. Yeah, that's a nice watch. To, yeah, it's a Ulysses Nardan watch, and I just send it back to get some repair, and it was very expensive. But, but I, I know he made it, so he knows how it works. The, the framers of our Constitution framed the Constitution on the Bible. Right. On Bible, techno, on Bible truths, and it's the foundational principles. All men are created equal and entitled to the pursuit of happiness equally, not always guaranteed happiness, right. but guaranteed the equal right to pursue it, not government providing it, but a chance to pursue it and win it for yourself. Equality of opportunity, work. not equity of outcome. Exactly. And, and so the, the founders were not perfect people. In some cases, like Thomas Jefferson, he owned slaves. Rob, uh, Washington may have had a slave or two because yeah, it, was, it was it was a fact of life when they came along. But even Jefferson said, this is wrong. And then, Jeff, uh, then Lincoln comes and abolishes it. And America gets corrected as we go. We're, we're a work in progress. We were, we were then and we are now. But you can't wipe out the history and still bring the correction. No, because if you don't show the warts and all, as the Bible does, the Bible shows all the mistakes and how, how, how they were remedied or the penalties that were paid. And, and how people were rewarded for obeying God right. and blessed by God. And that's the story. We are work in progress. America is still well, in progress. It was Bible believers that abolished slavery. Yes. There's people who believed it in was. the word of God who abolished it. Because Christ came to set at liberty those who were captive. You are so right. And we need to know that. But if you, if you ban the Bible, if you really that's hate speech. Can you believe that? Speech. It's the biggest book of love ever. Yeah, but there's stuff in there that, that the social media doesn't want because they want to make, they want to celebrate things that God says are an abomination. If you read the scriptures and you talk about what God <laughs> does not like, then you're, you're preaching hate speech because social media wants to verify and, and commend things that God doesn't like. So you got to get him out of the picture. And as a result, we go down, down, down. If we stick with God, we go up, 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 as we always did. So the solution is to turn back to the principles that the founders followed based on the Bible. Yes. Freedom of speech. Yep. Freedom of religion. Yep. Freedom of assembly. Even if you don't agree with freedom it. Freedom of the press. Every guy's got a right to express his own belief. And it worked really well for a number of oh. years. And we just kept getting better and better. America's past, even through the wars, and even through the Civil War and all these things, America kept rising and getting bigger and better all the time because we were one nation under God. It I says so on our currency. Yes, it does. Now, you want to take his name off the currency, watch it just go down the tubes. Uh, I mean, you take God's name off of things and you dishonor him. He says, okay, have it your way. The people of Israel, when they had judges and they were being really led by judges, they wanted a king like the nations around them. He says, well, and, and old Samuel says, Lord, they want a king and he's upset. No, they're not rejecting you, Samuel, they're rejecting me. Let them have their king, but tell them what's gonna happen when they take their king. Right now, our American public, unfortunately, has voted for things that God doesn't want. But he says, okay, you want it, you'll He's have it. He's kind of turned us over. You know, and you mentioned the other nations around. I think we're fighting a two-front war. One's inside the nation that want to see the principles destroyed, but also there are foreign nations that want to see our principles oh, destroyed. definitely, definitely. And we, we see Chinese influence in Hollywood. Are you seeing that? Yes, yes, I am. And are owning, owning networks and owning <laughs> papers and, uh, and, and influencing, doing exactly what Karl Marx and Lenin said they would do. We'll, we'll get to the young first get to the one generation and take over the one generation and we got them. And so that's what they're doing. They've infiltrated schools, school boards. They've infiltrated the, uh, 
uh, the systems of education, but they've also infiltrated the government. They're getting people elected to offices who will vote for things that God doesn't want, and they'll make them socially popular. And so now we're drifting, not just drifting now. It, I, I once painted in a book I wrote about America and a ship sailing along in a beautiful setting, but hearing some roar out in the far future and, and steam and headed toward a waterfall. And suddenly the pace is quickening and we want to try to reach the shore and slow down, but we, there's nothing solid to hold on to. And the ship is sailing toward the falls. <laughs> That's scary. And without, a, without any remedy, once that ship goes over the falls, well, can I share for. with you some good news? Yes, please. Okay, so we're in the economic war room. The economic war room teaches people how to weaponize their money. They're spending, they're giving, and they're investing to pass the culture to the next generation. Yep. You, you met my daughter earlier. She's 19. Her vote and your vote are the same. Yes. Now, fortunately, she's a brilliant young lady. I think you probably vote the same way. But there are a lot of 19-year-olds that might vote differently. Listen, I've got four daughters who vote differently than me. They're liberal husbands. They're good sons-in-law. I love my daughters. But they're all infected by the liberal trends socially as well as politically. And they, I've lost a lot of, of their respect because I supported Trump because I believe that with all of his faults and flaws, he was doing things that he said he would do that we wanted done. He strengthened the military. He, he, the economy rose and was blessed, and the rising tide raised all the boats. The blacks, right. Hispanics, everybody benefited. He, he was the best friend Israel has ever had, the, uh, better than any former president. He was doing all the right things. Well, because of that, and I even told him personally, I wish you would quit calling your opponents names. It's not presidential. I'll bet your wife's to and, and we're friends enough that he could laugh it off, but he was going to keep doing the way he, he did. But, but your vote. My daughters. Yeah, I know. But there are a lot of young people, 19, 20-year-olds, that are voting the wrong way. We need to pass the culture to yeah. them. The difference that you and I have between the 19, their vote's the same as ours. Yeah. But we have more money than they do. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure our money, our spending, yeah. our giving, and our investing, we don't invest in companies destroying our values. We don't spend with companies destroying yeah. our values. And we give to causes that preserve our values. Yeah. So I'm going to invite you to learn a little more about Economic War Room. We want to have you come back at some time. Any time you come to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we'd love to have you in the War Room. It was an honor to meet you. Thank you for taking time <laughs> with us. Good to meet us. you, too. God bless you. God bless you.